<laughs> we are live at the Taproot in Anchorage, Alaska. and as fired up about this election as the days are short and the mountains are beautiful. Um, here's the thing about coming to Alaska to cover a political race. When you fly all the way up to what is often described as the far upper left corner of the country, when you fly to Seattle, and then you realize that your connecting flight to Anchorage is another three hours up and left, you think, oh, wow, Alaska is really far from the rest of the country. But then you land here, and you think, oh, wow, the rest of the country is really far from here. <laughs> Alaska is different, and proudly so. It is not just geographically non-contiguous with the rest of the country, it is politically non-contiguous. <laughs> And since control of the United States Senate could hinge on what's going to happen in this Senate race here, it is worth remembering that in 1994, the first midterms of Bill Clinton's presidency, when everything in the country went from blue to red, Alaska went from red to blue, picking a Democrat to replace their Republican governor that year. In the last two elections, which were Democratic tidal waves, troubled Alaska Congressman Don Young held on as a Republican when everyone thought his seat would go Democratic. Alaska does its own thing. After a tide of outside money, mostly from California, propelled the candidacy of a Tea Party conservative challenger, Alaska's incumbent Republican senator lost her primary this year. Instead of endorsing the man who beat her, she decided to run a write-in campaign against him. Now, viewed from the lower 48, that is nuts. No one has won a write-in campaign for the United States Senate since Strom Thurmond did it in 1954. No one has ever won a write-in campaign for any statewide office in Alaska, ever. From a distance, what Lisa Murkowski is trying to do is nuts, and it's impossible. For from up here, I don't know if it's still nuts, I don't know if it's impossible, but it is definitely a different perspective. Lisa Murkowski has been getting primaried from the right. She has been fighting off right-wing challengers from her own party essentially the whole time she has been in office. As a state legislator in the late 90s, she was hit from the right for trying to balance the budget by means that included tax increases. In 2002, she barely survived a right-wing primary challenger named Nancy Dahlstrom. In 2004, running to defend the United States Senate seat her dad gave her, she got primaried from the right again. A guy named Mike Miller, not Joe Miller. He went after her on abortion and gun rights and taxes, and she trounced him. So focus on the family and, and Jim DeMint and the hardcore anti-abortion groups and the Tea Party and Sarah Palin. They're, they're all out for Lisa Murkowski's blood from the right, and Joe Miller's candidacy is the latest manifestation of that. But Murkowski has dealt with these types of challenges, challenges essentially her whole career, and she's always won. So now she thinks she can win again. And this is the great overlooked point of this whole year for this whole country about the Tea Party and the conservative insurgency and the civil war on the Republican side. This is the thing that nobody's getting. It's not new. The conservative movement purifies the Republican Party. It is their constant goal. They litmus test them. Sometimes they do it a lot. Sometimes they do it a little. And when the Republican Party is at its weakest, the Republican Party is most susceptible to what the conservative movement is always trying to do to them. This is not new. Preparing to talk to you today, I felt like I got. I felt like I, was, I had been looking through a telescope, and then I turned the telescope around the other way. Yeah. Because yeah. the national story of this race is, oh, there's this Tea Party r r uprising, and all sorts of people in the Republican Party are getting primaried from the right, and it's this very unusual national thing going on. Yeah. But in 2002, you got primaried from the right, and mm -hmm. in 2004, you got primaried from no, the right. No, not in 2002, because remember. But you were in the state legislature. Yes. Oh, 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 you're, yes, yes, yeah, yes. And then yes, when yes. you were in the state Correct. legislature, you Correct. got primaried from the right That's and you true. won. That's true. And in right. 2004, defending the Senate seat, right. you were primaried again from the right. Yeah. And now in 2010, yeah. you're getting primaried from yeah. the right again. And you so, think I would start getting the message? Well, that's what is the message? I mean, wh wh why does this keep happening to you? Well, I mean, I I'm from Alaska. Over 54% of the people in our state choose not to affiliate themselves with a major party. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when you, you come on, you're the, you are um, the Republican, you've got to expect that there's going to be a, a, a challenge. That's kind of the nature of, of the politics in our state. But I'm not going to change who I am to conform to that period of time when there's an election. I'm not that kind of a person. And so, I know, 
there's a there's a challenge from the right. I have survived it in in all of the other instances. Didn't so much survive it in 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 this cycle. And uh, but yet again, think about the dynamics of the Alaskan electorate. We just don't fit neatly into these party boxes. One of the reasons that we came here uh -huh. is because there does seem to be a persistent sort of not, I don't want to say hard right because I don't want it to sound pejorative, but mm -hmm. a very conservative wing yes. of the Republican Party. Yes. Um, Fox News makes me crazy, but I, <laughs> I am, a, I am an, a real admirer, actually, of Greta Van Susteren. Uh -huh. and she did an interview with you last week where you said mm -hmm. something really interesting. You said you remembered a time when the moral majority came in and turned Republican politics on its head here in Alaska. Mm -hmm. What did you mean when you said that to Greta? It was, and I don't know what was going on in the rest of the country. I can just tell you what was happening locally because I was very involved as a as a Republican in my party at that time, mm -hmm. and and there was just this this movement from the from the far right where the where the focus was was really on a litmus test mm -hmm. of of very conservative Republican values, and if you weren't there a hundred percent on abortion, if you weren't there a hundred percent on some of these other um, very very conservative social issues, then you weren't a bona fide Republican. Yeah. And there was a push to, to really to take over within the party, some of the party leadership, um, a move to to elect only those candidates that passed that that litmus test. And and that was a period in our state that caused a lot of tension because you have so many Republicans in the state like me who you know, look at it and say, well, uh, okay, I support this one, but I don't support this one. So I don't necessarily pass your lit litmus test. But what are we looking for here in, in our state in terms of leadership? Aren't we looking for somebody who can take the good ideas from both sides, marry them together, develop good policy? Isn't that what we're trying to build here? Or are we really trying to to define people according to somebody else's test, mm. somebody else's purity test. I don't think that's good for us as a party. I don't think it's good for us as a nation. It seems and to I'm be the consistent that, impulse well, in your party, though. It doesn't. It's it, not a one-off thing. It's not a Joe yeah, Miller phenomenon. True. It's been happening that cyclically for a long time, and it's a true. lot of times manifests itself by people taking you on. And I guess the, the real question then is, it manifests itself in people taking me on, and What's the what's the outcome? Well, I've I've managed to to survive through that process. Survive through that process. More of my interview today with Senator Lisa Murkowski is to come. Here's the thing, though. This is not a rematch of the Republican primary. This is a general election, and there is a real Democrat in the race, and he is really different than either Joe Miller or Lisa Murkowski. Yeah. may look too moderate when you look at her from the far right corner of righty McWrightville and Sarah Palin's house. When you look at her from anywhere else in Alaska, Lisa Murkowski and Joe Miller are a lot more similar than they are different. Right. Yes, Joe Miller says Social Security is unconstitutional and wants to privatize it. Lisa Murkowski is in favor of privatization as well. She also says we should look into raising the retirement age. Joe Miller's going after Lisa Murkowski for not being as hardline as he is on criminalizing abortion. Lisa Murkowski is not pro-choice. She's got a failing 25% grade from NARAL. It's not zero, but it's 25%. Both Joe Miller and Lisa Murkowski are funded by big outside corporate donors to the tune of millions of dollars. The big difference between Murkowski and Miller that her campaign is banking on is that he wants to cut off the spigot of federal funding that Alaska, frankly, lives on. Fair enough criticism, but Lisa Murkowski voted no on federal funding for Alaska in the form of the stimulus, although that did not stop her from putting out press releases bragging on what in Alaska was funded by the stimulus that she voted no on. All of that outside ad money flowing into Alaska, into this race, is for and about Joe Miller and Lisa Murkowski. They are destroying each other as only two candidates with almost exactly the same platform can do. Re Republican civil war. Who's left standing? The guy that is different than both of them, Democrat Scott McAdams, plugging away, disclosing all of his donors, and not taking any corporate money. He's got no private security force arresting reporters. His name actually is on the ballot. He is not ducking debates or events, and the national media is all but ignoring him because GOP civil war is the national story this year, and that's Miller and Murkowski. Scott McAdams is, however, being noticed enough here in Alaska by the people who actually decide this race that although he is trailing, it is roughly a three-way tie. Yeah.
Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Scott. How are How's you? How's it going? Thanks for coming to Alaska. It's really, good really to see nice you. to meet you yeah, in it's person. Good, it's good to meet you, too. I hope we didn't um, uh, swoop in and disrupt things. I, it's, I can tell the phone calls are still going on. No, we're, we're rocking and rolling, working hard. Do we have so. to get out of the way so that we don't intrude on people's conversations? We could probably just... step back here a little bit and, uh, yeah, come take a tour. All right. So we got a small space. You guys okay? Okay. Good? All right. Hi, guys. The last week kind of spilling all over the place here, but, uh, yeah, so... For all the right reasons, though, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. We've got the refrigerator room has now become a call room. So when people say the Democrats aren't going to turn out and Democrats aren't enthused... I about this election. It's not in Alaska. They're, they're they don't live in Alaska? That's the case this year. It's not this year. got a plus five enthusiasm... Uh, uh, plus five enthusiasm uh, uh, gain in Alaska, so there's not an enthusiasm gap here. The Democrats are actually fired up in this cycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will, t- you know, I'll yeah. tell you, I will tell you a secret that other other Democrats from other states who have nothing to do with you uh-huh. uh, told me, have been telling me over the past week or ten days that up here it feels like 2008, that the Democrats feel as excited as 2008. Yeah. I mean, it's not to pep rally or anything, but I do, But it is, I mean, people are talking about you behind your back, that the Democrats in Alaska are more enthused than people are giving them credit well, for. And that's part of the reason I wanted to see if it was true. Because it's hard for Democrats to win in the state. It's a Republican state. But we win under a couple scenarios. When you have two other people in the race, two conservatives running against each other. Tony Knowles won in 94 because he had two conservatives running. So he won for governor. A, a, a candidate implodes like Lindauer. A Democrat won when the Republican candidate imploded. Or in some, or you're convicted of a felony. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me just ask you one other thing. and I, I'm a, a little nervous to ask, not nervous, a little embarrassed to ask because everybody thinks Alaska, Sarah Palin. Alaska politics, Sarah Palin. And it seeps to me like Lisa Murkowski would be in a better position in this race if Republicans weren't afraid of crossing Sarah Palin to endorse her. But because she's endorsed Joe Miller, Republicans are really shy. They don't want to cross her. Do you think that she matters in this race? Is she casting a specter here? No, I, I don't think she has that big of a role here. I mean, certainly she did in the primary. She endorsed Joe Miller. That helped uh, lead him to national celebrity. You know, folks, uh, nobody knew who Joe Miller was in this state on the 15th of May. Uh, but Sarah Palin is somebody who has a lower approval rating in Alaska than Barack Obama. Really? She does. Her, wow. her, her numbers are lower. So Ms. Sarah Palin uh, was, was some, is somebody who was very popular in the beginning, but who's very unpopular with Alaskans. Well, Scott, thank you for your time. I thank feel you, like Rachel. you got to get out of here and not yeah. over. Yeah. You're encroaching on all these yeah. calls. Very busy. You, you bet. We are busy. Uh, we're, we're, we're making thousands of phone calls preparing to win. Sprint to the finish, man. Good yeah, luck. thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for coming to Alaska. Thanks. All right. This is going to be fun. Much more ahead, including our no-holds-barred, ultimately slightly successful all-out effort to get Joe Miller to talk to us. We are live from the Taproot Bar in Anchorage, Alaska. Do you agree that homosexuality is a choice? I think that's up to the individual. An individual has to make that decision. About whether or not they're gay or about whether or not they believe that? 